Now, our next guest is known for such movies as Interview with a Vampire, Evita, Zorro, Volver and Shrek. He's always been a unique star with an acclaimed career in film. With a new Christmas movie, Journey to Bethlehem, on the way, we're delighted to welcome Hollywood star Antonio Banderas to the show. Before we chat to you, senor, have a look at this. Rome has ordered us to conduct a census. Hmm? King Herod, by decree, at the command of our Lord and Emperor Caesar Augustus, a census shall be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All citizens shall return to their ancestral... Blah, 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 blah. Rome, you know. Rome. <laughs> Rome. <laughs> Father, we, we cannot just ignore Caesar. Well, a census will only anger the people. Antonio, great to have you on the show. Come here, you play King Herod. He's a baddie, but he's a funny baddie. Is that right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was uh, an interesting proposal. You know, I, I, I was actually, by the time that they came um, to me with this, uh, uh, you know, proposal, I was doing theater in Madrid with my own company. I, and I actually was doing company. I was interested because uh, Alex Anders, who is the guy who wrote the the music for the movie, he came with a machine, I don't know actually what it was, but a machine just to see if my voice actually can reach the pitch that they needed for the cut. <laughs> so I was singing in the theater and I didn't know that they were just trying, trying me, you know, I was just doing a, a screen test for them. So at the end I met with the guys and they said to me, okay, you can do the character actually because we have been measuring you with the machine and you can reach that pitch. I said, okay, thank you very much. You got the gig. Antonio, uh, this is a musical and it's been described as Glee meets the nativity. So I'm sold already. Mm -hmm. Was it great fun to make? It was actually because the, the, the movie, I mean, of course, it's a story a thousand times told uh, through the history of motion pictures and literature or whatever. But, you know, the proposal was filled with uh, humour and, uh, and freshness and youth. Uh, it's another way to take a look at that, at that story. Uh, I think it's a very interesting family project um, very wide, very transparent. Uh, it doesn't hurt anybody. Um, believers and not believers. I think it's a, it's a movie for family and, and very special for kids um, because it talks basically about, about love. And uh, the world is very confused and very violent these days. And, mm -hmm. and I thought that a movie like this, you know, it has a purpose actually in, in today's world. Yeah. And Tony, I really like these movies, particularly around Easter time and at Christmas as well, because it just brings back the message of what, in one sense, life is all about. Going back to what you said there, it's about love and having love in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I always, you know, there are many people who actually hate uh, Christmas. I, I, I always loved Christmas. It's one of the very, very few opportunities that we all get um, together all around the world. I, I always felt that changing, for example, the year, you know, at the end of, of, of the year, everybody get together to do something together. That is so difficult in our times, you know. On Christmas night, I still, uh, maybe it's because I am a romantic, I don't know why, but I still have a feeling that something, uh, that to have a little bit of hope. Yeah. of uh, in human beings, you know, still at the family reunion and the feel that everybody's doing the same thing that night, um, you know, getting together and having, you know, uh, the wishes that are actually positive. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something that I, um, and, and I repeat, it's probably because I am a, you know, a lost a romantic or probably a pathological one. But I, I love that feeling. So this type of movie, since I was a little kid, yeah. I, I love that uh, to enjoy it with my family, with my father, my mother, my brothers, when we were just in front of the television watching those movies all together at this particular time of the year. It was something very beautiful. Such great memories. I, I know. Yeah. And, and you're also of Catholic faith, Antonio. So did that make the film have more meaning for you? Yeah, um, yeah. In, in a way, it does. You know, I am a, yeah, I am a Catholic. No, yeah, I'm not a fundamentalist. You know, I, of course, I have my doubts about many things and about religion too. The, the best part of religion for me is what I mentioned before, mm -hmm. is uh, 
that side of religion that talks about love and communion between human beings. There are other, other sides of religion that actually um, I may disagree. You know, those part of religion that push people just to defend their belief at any cost and, uh, and with the use of uh, violence. I am not interested in that side. Uh, I want to just keep the the message that is positive for mankind. Um, other side of religion, I totally oppose to. Yeah. Um, Antonio, if we can go back to 2017, uh, you had a heart attack. Did you have a different outlook on life after this event? It was a, a very weird to say this, but it's one of the best things that ever happened in my life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes in, in life you need uh, to be punched <laughs> yeah. by life itself in order to understand where you are and the things that you need. And at that particular time, I was coming out of a divorce. I tried to just look for a sanctuary in the work. I made too many movies all together, one behind the other. I, I was living a, a life completely out of order uh, and, you know, just in an adrenaline situation <laughs> that was just commanding my existence. And suddenly my heart says, enough, yeah. enough of this. And it just hit me. And then only the beautiful things uh, surrounding me stay, you know, my daughter, yeah. my family, uh, my friends, mm -hmm. and my vocation. Not on, I, I wouldn't even say my profession because profession sounds some, like money and things. <laughs> my vocation as an actor. So <laughs> I just came out of my heart attack and I bought a theater. Yeah. <laughs> and awesome. I started working even more than before. But actually it was the life that I wanted to, to, to live. I am an actor because of the stage, yeah. because of the theater, not because of movies. Movies became as an accident. Um, after yeah. a very, very strong accident with 125 movies on my pocket. And you, <laughs> you've been an incredibly busy actor yeah. uh, over all of that time as well, working with so many other amazing actors and directors. Is there any role that stands out for you, though? No, not really. I, I, I love all my babies, <laughs> you know, the roles that I <laughs> And all my movies, even the, the movies that were not successful or, or the movies that didn't come out yeah. as, as they were supposed to, because you learn from those mm -hmm. a lot. And so in that process, uh, you know, I don't regret any of the things that I have done. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, it's like, it's like a, a staircase in which every side of that staircase is very important to understand yourself in the actual time. I, um, I don't have one of those roles that I could say, but I, of course there are, you know, Zorro, uh, all the work that I, the eight movies that I did with Pedro Almodovar, Spanish director, uh, Puss in Boots, is a oh, character Puss that I love. Oh, love him. Uh, Antonio, I told you, I was, I, was, I was telling my son <laughs> that you were coming on the show today, and when I told him that you were Puss in Boots, he actually hasn't spoken since. He's still in shock <laughs> that his dad has got to get to talk to Puss in Boots on the show today. You're a big hero <laughs> in our house, uh, Antonio. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm Pussy Boots. <laughs> you know what happens sometimes? I that I am in a supermarket or some uh, public place and the mothers come to with their kids and they say, look, that's Pussy Boots. And of course, the, the, the kids look at me and say, this guy is not Pussy Boots. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next step is, can you do the voice? So I just, I just do normally what I just did to you, you know, I put you, and then the kids, it's like, a, oh, putting together the whole entire oh, thing. I love it. So, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was a very celebrated character. Um, uh. It's very beautiful, actually, that a character like that has an accent. And this is something yes. uh, I am thinking in the Spanish community in the United States, very specifically mm -hmm. there in the America, that uh, the hero, you know, speaks with an accent. Mm -hmm. Um, and, the and the bad guys don't have any accent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's not always the same direction. And yeah. that, in, in the mind of kids, is very important mm -hmm. because they have, a, you know, an access to diversity that is very interesting in our days. And so you don't put all the things in the way that were all the time. You know, when I arrived to the United States, I remember they said to me, the actors, the Spanish actors that I was working in my first American movie, was, it was called, you know, the Mambo Kings. They said, if you're going to stay in America, you're going to play the bad guys. 
And um, that's for blacks and for us, for the Spanish it. people. And, you know, many years after I was playing a guy with a mask and a hat and a yeah. cape and a sword, and I was, you know, the hero and the bad guy got blue eyes and he was blonde and he got a perfect accent. And I thought, oh, maybe something is, is yes, uh, you know, uh, Changing, changing, yeah. Uh, our community, and that was always very well received. I am not saying that these people are good or bad. It's just we are human beings. We all yeah. travel. It's about experiences. You're of course so. being honoured just this week with the President's Award at the Latin Recording Academy. I think this Thursday in Seville. That must be an amazing honour for you to receive. It is. It is because um, ever since I bought this theatre. I am in love, completely in love, with musical theatre. Mm -hmm. And I think we have been doing here in, in Teatro del Soho in Malaga a very interesting work. Mm -hmm. All these people that I have behind me are the actors and singers and dancers uh, from a chorus line, mm -hmm. a production that we did here in, in Malaga, mm -hmm. and then we did Company, and now this year we are doing Gypsy. So I am just trying to do that uh, musical theatre that is very... Um, they are landmarks to understand, yes. you know, uh, the musical theater in, in, in all its, its extension and complexity. by Marvin Hamlish, you know, uh, Julie Steins, all of those musicians. And I think, in a way, that award is coming to, uh, uh, you know, as a recognition to yeah. that effort that we made here in Malaga to uh, to bring to the Spanish world in Spanish yes. those beautiful musicals that are in the together. Theater. Antonio, thank you so much for coming on the show today. We can't wait to see your new movie, uh, Journey to Bethlehem. Yes, it's out in you cinemas. You will have a good time. You will have a good time. Uh, good. It's out this Friday for all of our viewers at home. So thank you so much. We could talk to you all day. You're incredible. Thank you for taking the time with us. Adios, amigo. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.